What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So you've seen the title then, today I'm gonna to be taking you step by step through the strategy I followed that allowed me to quit my nine to five job and actually do Shopify dropshipping then as a full time income. So I like to be as transparent as possible on this channel. So what we're gonna be doing is actually jumping into the back end of my first ever Shopify store. I'm gonna be showing you pretty much everything. So the numbers that I produced, which was actually a little bit over $100,000 in less than a year, the actual products that produce those sorts of numbers and then we're going to be going through this strategy itself and actually how I did it. So that being said, then guys, that's the topic. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get straight into it. What is going on then guys, welcome to my computer. So here we are then inside the back end of the first ever Shopify store I ever created. Um, so just a couple of little background details. It's called Shop Omnia. Um, if you've been following the YouTube channel for a while, you've probably seen it before. I do feature it in my videos quite a lot because it's, it's nice to be able to show you guys actual proper examples of my experiences. Um, it's a store that's no longer in use um, just because it kind of became redundant. I ended up opening another general store, so it didn't make sense then to pay for just two lots of subscriptions, two lots of apps. There was two different ad manager accounts to manage. So I ended up shutting this one down. However, the site is still live. I do still use it as an example. It's great to send people there and actually show them what I've done. Um, so it makes a great example for YouTube. I don't like to put out my current stores on YouTube just because it keeps me safe. It protects me then from people placing fraudulent orders or putting stuff on, on social media. Um, I still get people actually trying to hack into this store because none of this information is really private. You can go on the website and see what, see what the actual email address is. People do try and get into this website, but because it's not a current store, I haven't really got to worry about much. So anyway, that being said, um, the first thing I want to show you is just the revenue. As you can see in the first nine months then, I did £77,465. And if you convert that to US dollars, it is actually over $100,000. So I don't like to clickbait you. I know it's close to that number, but technically it still is over $100,000. And the next thing I want to actually show you then is just how quickly you can actually scale dropshipping. That is actually one of the beautiful things of dropshipping is the fact that you can go from just naught to making a significant amount of money within a couple of months so being able to actually quit your job within a year with a new business is a big thing to do it's a really tough thing to do in fact we'll get into that later in the video let's actually show you some numbers so July 2016 then to September 2016 I only did five grand and then if we just have a look at October in itself uh, was over 20 grand or over twenty thousand uh, dollars if you convert that so and october when this month happened it was actually at that point where i started writing my resignation letter um, and i ended up quitting my job then at the end of december and from here on there i averaged about 10 grand a month yep 20 grand um, purely just because number one we've come up to christmas so i wanted to kind of kind of like scale things down just because coming up to Christmas there was no guarantees in terms of deliveries and things like that um, and then I pretty much did 10k a month from there on out so yeah 10 grand in fact just going back to the overall number again there's one thing that I want to highlight and show to you guys one of the big things or one of the most popular questions and that I get answered uh, people how do people deal with long delivery times and do people I always like do you really annoy customers like are there people just requesting refunds all the time and if you look at my overall returns then it's only a thousand pound and a thousand pound against 77,000 is not a big deal I think I'm not sure in the mass but it, I reckon it works out at less than two percent and less than two percent is pretty good like it's nothing that you should be worried about so if that is one of your concerns then just don't worry about it anymore at the end of the day e-commerce returns are going to be part of the process there's no business in the world that is involved in e-com and doesn't ever have to deal with returns it's just part of the business but it's not significant enough then to actually worry about so in terms of products then the main products were in fact i've got one on my desk um, was this product here which is i've done loads of videos on it so i'm not going to go into too much details but it's pretty much just an elasticated turquoise like animal charm bracelet like this was the best selling one which was the elephant um, and then the other one was um, i haven't got one in this office but it's just an led dog collar like the stereotypical example um, of like a drop shipping product so when it comes to people talking about saturation and things like that me personally i don't really believe in saturation if you can sell i think when people talk about saturation 
they talk about people selling the exact same product and selling it in the exact same way. But if you can sell a product that's similar but not exactly the same and then sell it in your own unique um, and eye-catching way, then it doesn't matter how saturated the market is. If you can do it better than the next person, then I think you're always gonna be able to sell that product. So anyway, that being said, that's the, that's the numbers, that's the store. Um, so how did I actually do it? So let's get into the strategy. As I said in the intro then, I'm just gonna move myself over here. As I said in the intro, like, there's no special secrets or hacks to this. Ultimately, it comes down to doing three core fundamentals correctly, which it says there. But before we get into that, I just want to talk about expectations first, because it's a very important part of starting any business. If you don't get into the business with the right expectations, then ultimately it's just going to lead to being dissatisfied and probably giving up. So the first bullet point then is drop shipping is definitely not easy. So when I started back then in 2016, it was certainly a lot easier then than it is now. So you do have to do things like differently. So I have adapted this strategy to match the current times in 2019. But drop shipping seems to have gathered this kind of reputation that like, it's a quick and sure-fired easy way of making money when that's just not the case. At the end of the day, no matter what it comes to, whether it's being good at golf or making money online. If it was easy, then everybody would be doing it and everybody would making would be making money. So just keep that in mind. And then as it says there, but it has so many perks that actually make it worth it. So dropshipping is one of those businesses. Now, I don't know many more businesses that require as little amount of money. There's no kind of big commitments up front. You can and you can start it so quickly as well. Like you can start selling products within a day and start seeing money coming in the door like within a few days. So it's not easy, but then it is 100% worth it. The skills that you'll gain and require to be successful at it will be skills that you'll be able to keep for your whole entire life and they'll be so translatable into other walks of life as well if you can become a skilled facebook marketer then you'll be able to pretty much get a job anywhere because if you can bring extra extra business in for a company then they're going to want you working for them and then number two is don't expect to quit your job overnight so Basically, don't be in a rush. Be patient and start slowly. I see so many people going into Facebook ads, especially, and like be spending 50 quid a day just from off the bat. I started on five pound a day for one ad set. Let that run for a few days, then made tweaks and adjustments. Just start really, really slowly. I created a saying that if you're paying for Facebook ads, if you're not learning, then make sure you're earning. So what that basically means is if you put money into Facebook ads, if you're not making money with them, make sure you're at least learning. So learning about how they work, what they're doing. Um, and if you're not learning, then make sure you're at least earning. So make sure you're at least money coming in, if that makes sense. So anyway, as it kind of says there, to kind of illustrate my point, you have to make £10 before you can make £100. You have to make £100 before you can make £1,000. And you have to make a grand then before you can make ten grand. You have to learn to crawl before you can walk. Before you can run, you have to learn to walk. So just don't be in a rush, take it slow, because once you do start to learn things and you do start to get a little bit of a momentum, as I just showed you, things can take off really, really quickly. But if you try and get to that point too quickly, then you're just going to end up failing, wasting money and just walking away with a sour taste in your mouth. So just take your time, work on making £10 first, then 100 then 1000 then 10000 so moving on, to be successful at Shopify dropshipping then, you must do three core elements correctly. So when it comes to running a successful dropshipping business, there's only three things that you have to do correctly. Number one, you have to choose the right product. Number two, you have to have a pretty decent Shopify store that just basically doesn't look dodgy. And then number three, you have to be good at Facebook ads, or you have to put the right ad out. So basically your ad has to look good and you have to put it in front of the right audience. And these are the three things then that I'm gonna be going through in this strategy. So number one, start with the product. And the first bullet point then is get your product first to take advantage of the free Shopify trial. So when you sign up to Shopify, there is a link in the description, by the way, feel free to use that link. I do get, and is it is an affiliate link, so I will get a kickback. So if you do decide to use it, then thank you very much. But if not, then no worries. Um, it's completely up to you guys. So when you do sign up though, you get a free 14 day trial. So make sure you have everything in place before you sign up so that you can take full advantage of those 14 days. If you sign up and then take three weeks to do your product research, then you'll have to pay for a basic plan so that you've got money going out the door before you've got it coming in. 
Point number two, so when it comes to choosing a product, make sure it's either a passion product or an impulse buy. So what a passion product is, is it's relative to a subject that people are really passionate about. So for example, dogs, um, one of my best-selling products when I first started, people are really, really passionate about their dogs, so it's a passion product. Um, this bracelet here, it come with loads of different animal charms. It was dead easy to market because I could market the elephant charm to people who loved elephants. People are really passionate about animals, so it's always a great market that I find. And then impulse buy, uh, typically the products in that are kind of less than 25 pound, where it's kind of like an insignificant amount of money for somebody to warrant doing research into. So if they see something they really like, for example, this bracelet, and it's only 10 pound, then the chances are they're not gonna do hours of research trying to find it somewhere else. As long as my store looks decent, they like the product, the checkout process is nice and smooth, they're just gonna impulse buy it, which means they, they're not planning on spending any money, they see it, they want it, and they buy it there and then. Point three then, it needs to be easily marketable. So if you pick a product that is difficult to market, then you're really gonna struggle on Facebook. So for example then, um, a fridge, I use it typically in all my video videos as an example. It's really difficult to market a fridge because everybody knows what a fridge is and what it does and nobody really gets excited about it. Plus it's not usually an impulse buy and it's not a passion product as well. I don't know anybody who's passionate about fridges. So anyway, ideally then a video ad. Video ads in my experience just work so much better than images. Um, and it needs to pretty much show exactly what the product is. And if you can then include a person using it and having a good time. So it boils down, it's called emotional marketing. I'm not going into crazy amounts of detail in this video because I've got videos on each one of these kind of individual subjects. Any questions at all, by the way, um, feel free to leave a comment down below. So if you could, the best way to market any product um, to summarize is to actually show somebody using the product and have a good time. If you see any ads on TV, they've always got people in and they've always got people having a laugh, having a joke around, smiling, enjoying using the actual product because people connect with it on an emotional wavelength, it res uh, wavelength, it resonates with them and ultimately it builds that feeling within them and they want to, they want to experience that same feeling. So in hindsight, it makes them want to buy your product. Trust me, it works. Next point, source from AliExpress with a good supplier. So typically on this channel, then I talk about sourcing products from AliExpress just because it's the easiest and safest way to source products as long as you go with a good supplier. To be honest, AliExpress are pretty good at like filtering out all the bad suppliers. So as long as you go with one that's been in business for at least a year, make sure it's got a pretty decent rating. Um, anything less than four stars, just stay away from, but you'll soon get the gist of it. It's like anything, when you'd go on to Amazon to buy a product, you wouldn't buy a product that has loads of bad reviews. Um, and AliExpress is the same way. As long as you go on there and people are saying good things about your supplier and about the product, then you can't really go wrong. And then the kind of final point, um, a few different methods to actually find in the products. So there's loads, hundreds of different ways of doing your product research. You only have to search on YouTube and you'll find just endless videos. So I don't wanna go into too much detail. Again, I've got videos on every single one of these points and you only have to pick say two or three um, and try and find the same product on each one. Make sure people are saying good things about that product on two or three different websites. Make sure it's getting good reviews, good amount of sales, and you pretty much can't go wrong. Um, in fact, what people tend to do is when they find a product, send it to me and I'll give you my feedback on it and whether I think it's worth your time or not. So a few different ways to mention then is AliExpress. If you just go on AliExpress and filter by orders, it'll show you the most popular selling products. Um, you can go and search for products on Facebook. If you, again, if you just search for a niche within Facebook, go to posts. Again, it will show you as well ads. In fact, I'll show you quickly. If we go across to Facebook, um, and then what I do is I've got this save section here. Now, shout out to a guy called Dan Silva on this. I've been watching him for like two plus years. A lot of people always ask me, like, who did I watch when I first started or did I take a course? And I didn't take a single course. I literally just watched this guy um, on YouTube. And I was watching one of his videos last week and he... And this, I actually learned this trick from him. So you can actually save ads and then you can create collections and add different products to those collections. And I've created a collection called Facebook Ads Zen. And these are all really, well, pretty much products that I've been looking at recently. Um, and it's just a great way of basically keeping track of products. And you can have a look at an ad then. So this one, for example, and it will tell you 
a lot, a lot of information about the actual product and you can have a look at how many comments. If I try and find a more popular one then. Did have this mini projector one save, but looks like it's not running anymore. Let's go with this one. Um, I think this one's pretty popular as well. I'll just pause that, stop the annoying music. So 1.7K comments. What you can do is open up the comments and just look for all buyers intent. That's the key thing when doing your product research. If an ad's got millions of views, then it's a good sign, but you actually wanna go through the actual comments, read through them one by one, and actually look for evidence that people have bought that product, because when somebody's bought it and they received it, they will, they will go back to the comment section of that post and comment whether they've received it, what they think of it. And that's what you want, basically. You want an actual buyer's intent. It's not just good enough to find an ad that has loads of views. You want comments in there that show that people are actually buying the product. So anyway, that's it for product. Um, like I said earlier, any questions on this whatsoever, then please do just leave a comment down below. I always get back to every single comment. Moving on to number two then is your Shopify store, the second thing you must do well. So number one then, once you have a product lined up, um, this is the time to begin your trial and always begin with a general store. So there's a massive debate between general store and niche store. If you're a beginner with zero experience with marketing, and e-commerce, then I 100% recommend you go with a general store. Um, quite simply, it offers more flexibility so you can test any niche. The first five products, I've done a video on this, I think I advertised maybe half a dozen products before I found the one winning product. And if I'd created a niche store, that would have been six different stores that I would have had to create before I found that winning product. So by starting with a general store then, it just allows you to be flexible, test any product, any niche, and ultimately it's just gonna save you so much time. So the strategy that I implement right now is I have a general store which I use to test products on, and then once I've found a winning product through that general store, I'll build a niche store around that product and start building a brand around that product. Number three then, so keep the design simple and clean, so white background, uh, blue, green, orange buttons. You want you want colors that aren't really that harsh. If you Google like the, psycho like the psychology of buying, then certain colors do kind of like subconsciously affect different people. Black test and, Helve and Helvetica font. So very neutral, um, but at the same time, it just needs to be simple, slick, um, and professional. So if I just show you a couple of stores actually, and just give you an example. So this is actually the first store. So this this was the actual store. Then I haven't changed a single thing that did over a hundred thousand um, dollars in revenue. This was the product, and in fact, if I show you the bracelet, that was my first winning product. Um, so handmade to order arrives in two weeks. Free delivery. Uh, this comment is no longer. That's because the post is inactive. What I did was implement people who come back. As I said earlier, people will come back to your post and leave nice reviews. So I implemented them to the actual product per page because what's better than a review that people can actually click on? It will take them to the post and they can see that it's real life people. You leave in those reviews. Um, and this was the product page then. So this is the store. As, as you can see, it's dead simple. Um, there's nothing special about it. It was Helvetica Vaughn, I believe. Um, there's no crazy colors. It's just simplistic, basically. That's the word I was looking for, simplistic. Um, like, and what people have started doing as well is sending me their stores um, for me to look at, which I'm more than happy to do. I'll have a look at your stores and I'll just give you a few bullet points, a few different things um, that you can work on. Uh, moving down, if in doubt, use my store. Uh, we've already covered that. Or find other stores using the myip.ms Shopify. So again, if I just show you quickly, if you just copy that, put this into Google, um, it's, it'll be the top one. And these now are, is every single store that's using Shopify. So you can open up a couple of these, um, have a look at like just basically the general design of their theme and how their store looks just to get ideas another one that's good to look at is bluecrate.com once this loads up these guys have 100 percent drop shippers and as you can see it kind of implements the points that i've spoken about nothing crazy no big bold hash colors everything's just pretty simplistic um, and that being said, then moving on to the next point. So use Commerce Inspector to see what theme they are using. I haven't got it installed on this computer actually. So now that I've got it installed, I can actually show you what it does. So it's called Commerce Inspector then. I'm not affiliated. It's 100% free. If you just Google it, you'll be able to find it. It's a Chrome extension. 
So if you just go across to any Shopify store and it's this little magnifying glass here, so if you just click on it, it's gonna tell you what theme that store is using. So if you like the layout of a certain store, you can go ahead and use the same theme. And it gives you a few a few other bits of information as well. So I've got the free one. Um, so this is the information you'll be able to get as well. If you click on apps, it's going to give you a, an idea of what apps that store's using. Um, I'm looking at these now, and I don't use every single one of these. I use most of them to be fair, so it's pretty good. Um, but just be wary of that. Um, and if you click on best selling as well, it's going to show you the best selling products of that particular store. Um, and then one other thing to show you, if you click on actual products itself, um, it will show you like the recently launched products and stuff like that. So a couple of things for you guys to check out when you're doing your product research is definitely a tool um, that's worth having. So I'm just going to move myself, let's go back to the strategy. I'm going to move myself back up here. Uh, moving on then, so theme-wise, keep it simple again, Fencher or Brooklyn. Um, in other words, choose a free one to begin with. It's all you need. If you have got the budget then, as it, if it says here, as it says here, if you have the budget then, go for a paid theme. I recommend Shoptimized. Again, I'm not affiliated. Just all the stores I've seen that use that theme just all look really, really good, really professional. It's got really, really good reviews as well. So if you have the budget, then go for Shoptimize. But otherwise, the free ones are more than adequate to make um, probably more money than you would than than you need to make. Moving on to the next point, then so recommended apps. There's a few um, looks, which is one that is great for reviews. I didn't use this to begin with, but it's in all my stores now. Um, it's just by far of all the apps I've used. It's in terms of actually gathering reviews and then presenting them on your store, it's just really good. So make sure you check that one out. Make sure you get an upsell app as well. This is 100% critical. If you want the biggest return on your money in e-commerce, then get a decent upsell app. I use one called By Bold. Um, it gives you, oh, I can't remember the plans now, but at max you'll end up paying something like $50 a month. And if you've got enough traffic going to that product and that upsell, then you'll easily 10x your money. Uh, moving on, Oblo, this is again another must-have app. It provides the link then between AliExpress and your store, just in terms of adding products to your store, order fulfillment, tracking details, all that sort of stuff. Oblo provides that link. And again, it's just another app that I wouldn't personally do without. It just makes your life so much easier. It's gonna save you so much time and time is money at the end of the day. And then fourth and finally is MailChimp. So it doesn't have to be MailChimp, but definitely some sort of automated email responder. Once you set up the processes and just let them let them run, you don't have to do anything and they'll just keep bringing in money through the door without you having to touch or do anything. So two things that you make sure you set up. Number one is car abandonment. Um, I use like a three day um, process so they'll get sent it say like six hours after they've abandoned their car, then 24 hours and then 48 hours. So in the end they get three emails and then also you want to retarget people who have already made purchases on your store, send them discount codes, send them links to other products. Just try and get people back on your store as much as possible. Um, next point, so make sure these are must-haves as well. Make sure you have an FAQ about us and shipping slash returns. These are key. I see so many people not even take the time to put these um, on their store. But for, for a new person coming onto your store who doesn't have a clue who you are, they're gonna do a bit of digging, they're gonna do a bit of research, and they wanna make sure you're a legit company. And every legit company has these pages, so you need to have them as well. Um, and then finally, make sure you include trust badges. So these are these are key. If you look at my store here, uh, let's go back to this product. Um, I've got trust badges at the at the bottom here, so people can see that we're powered by Stripe. A lot of people know Stripe. It has the PayPal logo there as well. Everybody knows PayPal. They all see it. Everybody sees it as a safe way to check out and pay for something. Um, so it's a great thing to have in your store. I actually advertise that fact on my Facebook ads as well because people see it as a trusted thing. Um, and obviously, I've got the 30-day money-back guarantee there. Again, everybody wants a guarantee um, with what they're buying. Um, it just puts across like an image of being professional and a legit business, which is obviously what we want to do. Moving on to the third and final part then of the video. If you're still watching guys, I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. Um, if you're enjoying the video so far, please do leave a like as well. I would really appreciate that. 
Um, and then number three, then Facebook ads. So point number one, keep the ad copy simple. And by that, I mean the actual design of the ad. It doesn't need to be crazy. It doesn't need to be tons of emojis. It just needs to be solid and to the point. So a great example of this then, um, if we go to this guy's Facebook page, and these guys are easily pushing seven figures um, a year. And if I just wait for this to load up, and if you just look at their posts then, so you can see they've got just like a statement about what the product is, and then it's just a simple call to action and then a link to the products. And if you have a look at all their posts, all their ads, um, it's the same layout for everything. And if you have a look at these guys' traffic, I don't think I've got the extension um, added in. Let's have a look. Uh, traffic, explore traffic insights. Uh, let's load this up. So if we just look at look at how many visits they get in a month, um, total visits, 430,000 visits. And is that in the last this month? So in August, they got over 3 million visits. So obviously a very big store, still 1.7 million. And then by the looks of things, they kind of average anywhere between like half a million visits. So these guys are doing very big numbers. And as you can see, these are the posts. Their ad copies are exactly the same. They're very simple, simplistic. What does it for them is the actual ad itself, which we're gonna get into now. So run ads from a Facebook page. Another common mistake I see people making is, um, they'll run it from their Facebook profile, which just doesn't look very professional at all. So take the time, create a Facebook page, make sure you brand it and call it the same thing as your Shopify store. So keep text to a minimum, then make a statement or ask a question. Um, so that's gonna be your top line. And what that's gonna do is get people's attention. If you make a statement that's relevant to them, it's gonna make them interested. In the same way, if you ask them a question that's relevant to them. So if you ask people who walk their dog in the dark, do you walk your dog in the dark? It's gonna to apply to them and they're gonna be interested. And then therefore, they're more likely to take the time and actually look at your ad. And then highlight the problem and the solution. So I usually have two lines of text. So top line is the statement or question. And then the next line is highlight the problem and the solution. So walking your dog in the dark can be dangerous. Um, keep your dog safe and sound. Um, on the roads with this LED dog collar. And then thirdly, just a call to action of where they can actually buy your product. And then make sure you link that link direct to the actual product page, not to the home page, but direct to the product page. We wanna make it as simple as possible then and as quick as possible for somebody to be able to buy our product. We live in a day and age where especially if somebody's buying on a mobile phone, there's so many distractions. There might be a WhatsApp, somebody might ring them or a Facebook notification or um, an Instagram DM. There's just so many different things that can happen to that person. So the longer they're on your store, the more chance they have of being distracted. So you wanna make the buying process as quick and as fast and as efficient as and easy as possible. Moving on then, so use a video ad preferably, like I mentioned earlier in the video. Video ads just get so much more eyes on and so much more engagement um, than I found personally anyway. Up to 30 seconds long and you don't like a 10 minute video, people are just gonna get bored. Um, you wanna show in those first 10 seconds exactly what the product is and exactly how it's gonna be beneficial for somebody. Um, if needs be then use a slideshow of images preferably featuring a person or face showing a happy emotion. So by far the best way to sell any product, I said it earlier in the video, but it needs reiterating because this point is key. Take the time to create your own ad, feature yourself in it if you have to, or you can find people on fiverr.com then that will do this for you. But the best way is to feature somebody's face or somebody just having a good time actually using your product. So moving on then, to begin with small audiences, Facebook works on past data. If it's got no past data, it's not gonna have a clue who to show your ad to. So you have to do the tags in for Facebook. So choose small audiences then up to 200,000 people max. Use two interest flex. So if we're tagged in the dog niche, for example, we wanna choose interests that are relevant to people already spending money within their dog niche because we wanna target people who are actually own dogs. So you could have, what I would do is choose dogs as like the base interest and then narrow the audience to something like people who walk dogs or certain dog magazines. Um, we wanna choose newsfeed only in terms of location this way 
it's going to be it's going to be taking up the main kind of chunk of screen space. You've got a better chance of somebody actually seeing it. <clears throat> Make sure you test one niche at a time. <clears throat> As I mentioned, Facebook works on past data. If you're advertising two different products at a time from two different niches, the data is going to be skewed. So, for example, don't sell dog products and cat products at the same time just because they're two completely different audiences. It's going to skew the data and the chances are you won't do very well at selling either product. Just focus on one product at a time. Um, and then finally, use a seven day click. So Facebook. When, whether you choose seven day click or one day click, then Facebook will take all the data within that time frame and use that to optimize your ad. So if you're only spending $5 per day and choosing one day click, then it's not gonna have a lot of data to base the add on to optimize it, if that makes sense. So if you choose seven day click, then there's obviously more data that Facebook is actually gonna use. And therefore you've got a better chance of optimizing your ad and just getting you better results basically. So as sales begin to come in then, the very final point, um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be bringing out a lot more videos on scaling, hence why I'm not mentioning it too much in this video. But to be honest, when it comes to scaling, it's pretty simple. As sales begin to come in then, you scale vertically and horizontally. So when they start to come in, Facebook starts to learn who your ideal customers are. So this is where you can start increasing this audience size. We no longer have to choose up to 200K. We can go even further than that because Facebook is starting to recognize who our ideal customer is. So we can do this quite a few different ways. We can include more countries. We we can simply increase the budget on the ad set and we can start targeting broader interests. So that being said then guys, that wraps up the video. Um, I know I've chatted quite a lot of talks pretty quick. Um, apologize if it's made absolutely no sense whatsoever. It is gone three in the morning. Um, but if you are still watching the video guys, I really do appreciate it. It really means a lot. Like, I don't think there will be many people that have made it this far in the video. I'm probably just talking to myself right now. Um, but if you are watching this video, then make sure you leave a comment down below and just let me know that you got this far in the video. It'd be interesting to see because I've got no idea how long this video is. It's probably gonna be easily 20 minutes, if not more. But I really do appreciate it. Obviously, the more people watch of my videos and the more viewers and subscribers I'm going to get. So I really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please do drop a like on it. Um, and that being said then guys, have a good Saturday and I'll see you tomorrow.